first video in the 8 Essential Steps to Claw Hammer Banjo video series. In this video, I'm going to be covering what is the distinguishing feature of this style of play, which is the movement of the picking hand, which for most of you is going to be your right hand. And I'm covering this first, not just because it's, the, it's what uh, imparts this style with its distinguishing sound, uh, but also because it's the thing that oftentimes leads to the most frustration for folks who are trying to learn it. And not because it's difficult, uh, but because folks get the wrong impression or idea about what they should be doing with their picking hand. So I want to make sure that you end up getting started off on the right foot, um, that you don't end up developing a technique that will make it difficult for you to progress, or that will be really hard to unlearn later. And as you move through this video, or any of the videos, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be checking back periodically, and I'm happy to answer anything. So in some respects, everything that you need to know about the right hand, or the picking hand, the claw hammer banjo, is in the name itself. You basically put your hand into a claw-like shape, and then you hammer down on the strings. Now, if you've ever played a stringed instrument before, or even if you haven't, uh, this may seem like an odd approach to playing a stringed instrument. Um, it's our natural inclination, particularly when we're trying to strike individual strings, to try to do so by plucking up with our fingers like this. This makes sense because uh, we're able to make very precise movements uh, with our fingers. Um, fortunately, uh, many years ago, uh, probably in the country of Africa, some brave and ingenious soul um, who was likely playing a banjo-like instrument decided that they'd instead try to strike the individual strings not by picking upwards, but by striking down with the back of their nail uh, towards the ground. And surely uh, this was awkward at first, as it will feel to you. But over time, that person must have realized that you could teach yourself to become just as, just as accurate at hitting individual strings with the down picking motion as you can by up picking. And better yet, what they also probably realized was that using this technique uh, opened up a world of musical possibility and rhythmic possibility that you just can't get um, using the up picking method. So I think it's appropriate that we, we take a moment to pay our thanks to that brave and ingenious soul. So the first thing I want you to do is start to get comfortable just with the shape that your hand should be in when you're playing claw hammer. And here there are two points that I want you to remember or to think about. Um, one is that the hand should be very relaxed. So tension in general is the enemy of music. And uh, muscle tension in the hand uh, with claw hammer banjo is going to lead to a lot of pain and frustration. So the first thing is to make sure your hand is nice and relaxed. I think some people get the idea that uh, the strings are set in motion from keeping a very rigid hand uh, through the striking motion, like that. Um, and the reality is uh, the strings are set in motion uh, not from a rigid hand, but from the, momentum of, from the momentum of the hand that's generated by the movement at the wrist, like this. In essence, here, the, uh, st the striking finger is really just along for the ride uh, as it moves through the string. Now, you'll notice that when I play, uh, my index finger actually sticks out a little bit. Um, I'm actually striking the strings with my middle finger, so my index finger really isn't doing anything. But the reason it's out there is because that's simply the most relaxed position for my hand. If I were to try to bring it in, 
to a more claw-like posture, um, that would introduce tension into my hand. And I don't want muscle tension. So the point here is not that you should stick out your middle finger like I do, um, but that you should be mindful of how your hand feels and mindful of the position where it feels the most relaxed. Okay, so uh, in claw hammer banjo, almost all of the movement you'll be making is gonna be at the wrist. And you can think of the wrist as having two primary degrees of freedom. You can either move it side to side, as you would uh, if you're shaking off some water from your fingers. And you can also move it up and down as you would when you're knocking on a door. Most of the time, the movement you'll be making is the hammering motion or the up and down movement of the hand like you're knocking on a door. Um, sometimes uh, claw hammer is also referred as knocking banjo or rapping banjo uh, for this reason. And uh, the hammering motion is the motion you'll be using to strike individual strings like this. If you're strumming across multiple strings, uh, which is a technique that many players use in their playing, um, then you'll be moving your wrist in the side-to-side -side motion like this. Now, the question that inevitably arises at this point is, what finger should I use to strike the strings with? And here there are really two viable options. You can use your index finger, or you can use your middle finger. Uh, and generally speaking, claw hammer banjo players are, are divided equally uh, in these camps. So about 50% use the index finger, about 50% use the middle finger, and maybe about 2% use another appendage. Uh, personally, I use my middle finger uh, just because that's what I find more comfortable. And that's what I'd recommend you do when you're first starting out, is just experiment with using the index or the middle finger. And if one feels more comfortable than the other, just go with that. If they feel equally comfortable or equally awkward, which is more likely, uh, then maybe just choose your fate with a coin toss. So I'm gonna leave you with two exercises that I want you to get comfortable with before you move on to the next lesson. And these two exercises are basically just rehearsing the two basic motions. So the first one we'll start with is the hammer motion. So all I want you to do here is just practice uh, the hammer motion on the first string. So the first string is the one that's closest to the floor. The fifth is the one closest to you. And uh, um, just, just practice uh, striking down in a hammering motion. Don't worry here about being accurate if you don't just strike the, the first string. If you hit others, it doesn't matter. If you miss, it doesn't matter. Um, just practice uh, getting the basic idea of the um, hammering motion down. And uh, one of the things I want you to experiment with is, is how much force or how little force it actually takes uh, to get a sound out of the string. Um, you'll probably be surprised at how little effort you have to exert uh, to actually make a sound. And uh, if you can start out uh, with a light touch uh, from the beginning, uh, then it'll make your life a lot easier down the road uh, with this style. The second exercise that I want you to do is to just practice the strumming technique with the hand, which is the side-to-side -side movement. Um, Again, don't worry too much about accuracy here, um, whether or not you hit two or three or four strings when you strum. Um, I just want you to get the basic uh, motion, side-to-side -side motion down 
as you strike the strings. Okay, so those are the uh, two exercises that I want you to practice, the hammer and the strum, uh, until you feel comfortable with it. Uh, I think that anytime you're learning a totally new technique or skill, um, that you know about 15 to 20 minutes a day of dedicated and focused practice on it is really all you need um, to make progress. So do that, um, and then once you feel like you've got it down, you've got it under your belt, then you'll be ready to move on to uh, the second video.